Hey there, sport. Sorry I've been gone so long. Mama's been busy blowing dudes. I feel betrayed. Someone I've been a fan of for a long time just made me look foolish. Tech 9 For those who aren't familiar, the self-proclaimed number one independent rapper in the world hails from Kansas City and has been cranking out bangers since the Twin Towers were still a thing. You may know him from hits like Hood Go Crazy, the 2014 and 2015 World Series, and Republican TikToks. Welcome to the Red Kingdom. Yeah. For years I have listened to his shit. I've introduced people to his music. I've gone and seen him perform on occasion. I was a huge fan. But then he goes and does this shit. Like in some more in my veins, my culture banging with strange. I changed the game, so what's my motherfucking name? Rah! What they gonna get though? He ruined Dwayne Johnson. The man had a virtually indestructible image. He was basically cringe proof. Which is saying a lot because he was in the WWE, the Fast and Furious franchise, and in shameless Disney reboots. But just a few seconds with Tech 9 and he goes from the people's champion to a 50-year-old bodybuilder rapping in a music video with a 50-year-old rapper. There are people who want this man to be our president. Which means, if that were to happen, there's a good chance we would be able to see him perform this at his own inauguration. So, keep that in mind. But let's give credit where it's due. The Rock is going through a pretty kick-ass midlife crisis. From his perspective, he was just featured on a song with an artist that he likes. But from our perspective, it's like he tried bringing back the T-Pose. This is my jumping off point for Tech 9 What I mean by that is I will no longer be looking out for his new material. And this isn't meant as a negative thing or anything really that Tech 9 should even give a shit about. It's more of an excuse to show you charts that I made illustrating the artist timeline. This isn't anything revolutionary or really all that original. It's more of a visualization of an already widely accepted idea. In this timeline there are four phases. The foundation phase where the artist establishes his or herself. The peak phase, which is the height of the artist's quality of work, not necessarily the most popular. The decline phase, which is where the quality of work begins to suffer for any number of reasons. In some cases, people like to blame this phase on an artist becoming sober. In this phase, the artist may still produce some good shit, but the overall quality isn't great. And finally, the jumping off point. This is the point where the artist has no chance in hell of putting together another quality album. Here's Tech 9s body of work. He started off really strong for the first decade or so, hitting his peak in the 2006 to 2009 area with the releases of Ever Ready, Killer, and Psychology 101. But then he released the King of Darkness album in late 2009. The album itself wasn't terrible, it just wasn't the quality of work people were used to. From there it was an up and down decade of either decent music or albums that just should not have been released, until we reached this, the jumping off point. There is another artist with a very similar timeline to Tech 9 though. Starting off his career with a few banging ass albums, Eminem had a great foundation phase, reaching his peak with the release of The Eminem Show. But then he followed a masterpiece with Garbage, spending the next several years going back and forth between good albums and bad, until the freestyle. At the 2017 BET Awards, Eminem freestyled in a parking garage while all of his black friends waited quietly in the background for him to finish. If you're not aware, the whole bit was about how Trump is bad, and if you are a fan of Trump, then you're not a fan of Eminem, which I had two problems with. First, he is Donald Trump. It's like he doesn't remember rivaling Marilyn Manson as the leading cause of outrage in the early 2000s. You know, kind of like how Homeboy was the leading cause of outrage in 2017. But instead of grabbing women by their giners, he focused on murdering his mom, murdering his wife, being gay, and raping lesbians. Raping lesbians, why they screaming? Let's just be free! The second issue with the freestyle is, it wasn't good. For a guy who literally starred in his own movie about himself starting out as a freestyle rapper, you'd expect more than this. Racism's the only thing he's fantastic for. Cause that's how he gets his rocks off and he's orange. Since then he's released three albums, all of which have been his worst so far. These two have very similar timelines, but much like the Humpty Dance, no two people will do it the same. Hobson. His foundation phase consists of an album no one listened to despite it being okay, and a mixtape. Then he released an absolute classic titled Raw, thus beginning his peak phase. He then followed that masterpiece with Knock Madness, the beginning of the decline phase. He continued down this path for years before releasing No Shame. On it, a diss track to his baby mama, 
which was actually pretty good and kind of sad. Then he immediately releases a single along with a music video, taking back all of the mean things he said and apologizing. The jumping off point. Simps don't belong in the rap game. Now, in some cases, an artist won't even complete the cycle. In fact, he or she should look to die right around this phase in order to attain GOAT status, regardless of their sample size. So if you feel like you're entering your peak phase, and let's not forget artists like Cryptic Wisdom, who complete their cycles before their careers even have a chance to take off, and they block you if you bring this up to them. There's really no point to this video, and I don't have a witty conclusion. What can I say except you're welcome for the tides, the sun, the skies?